Welcome to another episode of Laugh Support. The only lifestyle program that has all the do-it-yourself jobs that you actually want to do. And all the lifestyle advice that you actually need. Yes, we're so glad to be your company tonight. Because we've got a great show in store for you. That's right. I'm Penny and tonight I'll be showing you how you can rock hard in the mosh pit and live to see the next day. I'm Todd, Life Support's handyman, and I'll be showing you a top little DIY project that'll put some groove back into your nightclub moves. I'm Sigourney, and tonight I'll be showing you the modern woman's way to meet a man today. And I'm Dr Rudy, and I'll be showing you how to keep track of the people that matter. That's right, we've got so much to teach you tonight, we'd better start now. Because if we don't, I just don't think we'll fit it all in. So, without much further ado, let's let fly with the show. If you're like me, you're a bloke with no rhythm who can't dance to save his own life. But there will be occasions where you'll need to dance to impress the ladies. So what do you do? Here's the drum. These days, solar power has become incredibly cheap. You can pick up a couple of these things for a few bucks at your local Dick Smith store. Basically, these turn light into electricity. So what you need to do is turn them into little epaulettes for your jacket. There you go. Very Michael Jackson-esque. Now, I've run a couple of wires from the panels like so and clamped the wires onto my nipples. Now, when I go to tonight's rave, the lights will flash in time to the music, the panels will turn that into electricity, which will send my body into a rhythmic convulsion. The upshot being that I'll be able to dance in time to the music. considered artificial insemination? You know, it's not just for lesbians and fat ugly women. It's also a great way for us more attractive modern women to meet men. I love shopping through online catalogues. And the best thing about artificial insemination is that you get to use your catalogue shopping skills for meeting men. Here's a good one. Six foot two, blue eyes, black hair. He has a PhD in international economics and he's currently working as a stockbroker. Sounds like my kind of man. And best of all, because he's in the catalogue, I know he's been thoroughly checked out by doctors. He has no diseases and is able to breed. I've been out with men for months and not known this much about them. Once you've made your pick, just come down and stake out the sperm bank. All you need is a good pair of binoculars and a thermos full of coffee. Fortunately, years of training has taught me to gauge a man's height, weight, hair colour and ethnic background from a distance of 50 metres. So now I just sit here and wait for my man to make a deposit. Then I pounce. Actually, I think I might pounce before he makes a deposit.
you've probably heard a bit about microchipping. It's where they put a tiny chip under the skin behind your dog's head. So if the dog gets lost, they can scan it to find the dog's owner. In fact, this simple technology is a brilliant way to keep track of any animal that's gone astray, which means it's also perfect for your old dad. If you've got a parent living with you, you know sometimes they're going to wander off, but if they're chipped, you can be sure that they're going to return to their rightful home. Just make sure to get one of these special tattoos on the ear so people will know to take him to the vet for a scan. Come on, Dad. I've got a nice scan of food waiting at home for you. Mmm. There's nothing quite like a soothing massage to ease the stresses and the strains of the day. A little softer, thanks, Jorgen. And girls, if you're on the lookout for a masseur, there are hundreds in the phone book, but make sure you always choose a man. Because if you choose a man, you can always get a free massage. During my session, your masseur touched me in a very inappropriate way. I've never felt so humiliated. I will not be paying for this massage and I will never be back to this establishment again. was really good. Pity will never work again. See ya. Finding a night partner can be difficult, especially in a crowded bar. Sometimes a woman on her own can seem intimidating to the sort of man you're prepared to share your bed with. Hello, Sogorni. When you're out on the town, it's much easier to catch the eye of a prospective partner if you already appeared taken. That's when working as a team can be a good idea. Use a mate to get a date. That's right, Sigourney. When I go out to my own, no one gives me a second look. But if a woman thinks I'm taken, I immediately become more attractive because I seem unattainable. So tonight, we're going to show you how to go hunting in pairs. Here's some simple signals to get you started. This is, I'm not really with him, he's my brother. This is, she's my ex-girlfriend, you are my future. And if it's a tough room and there's still no success, then there's no better way to attract attention than by evoking sympathy after a fight. particular method doesn't produce immediate results, don't worry. If you can turn the other cheek for long enough, someone will say yes. So try this and get the look of love from someone you like the look of. You have more interest in the ones that are taken because they're the best ones. The ones that are usually single are the ones that no one wants. Yeah, some women like when they... You know, when they know that they already have a girlfriend, maybe it's more like a challenging for them. They dump her for you, makes you feel better. <laughs> I think they are more appealing because you know that they're good enough for someone else to want and they've got sort of that more caring side about them. If I'm wearing a wedding ring, I tend to have more people look at me as in girls. If I've got no ring on, they don't even want to know you. Simple as that. Someone who is married or already have a relationship doesn't mean that he is the right one for me, but uh, maybe it's just like I like the challenge to get that person. What is going on there? What do you mean, Todd? Well, if my eyes serve me correctly, what I just observed was two of my work colleagues in a passionate embrace. It was a demonstration. <laughs> it certainly was. How long has this been going on? This is going to upset the whole balance of the team. I just hope they don't get fired like Stan and Tracy. Todd, it was a demonstration to show the people at home how to pick up. No, I saw it, Penny. I saw exactly what's going on. Speaking of seeing, that's what Sigourney's next segment is all about. Yeah. 
There's nothing more frustrating than losing a contact lens. They're nearly impossible to find, expensive to replace, and it can be dangerous if you have to drive home to get your spare glasses. But don't worry, there is a way to make sure that you never lose a lens again. Simply super glue a fashionable chain to your contact lenses. That way, if one falls out, you know it's not far. And yet you can still enjoy the natural look of not wearing glasses. Because remember, men don't make passes at girls who wear glasses. Oh, g'day. The sensitive new age guy of the 90s is now a lonely middle-aged man. Don't let this happen to you. Here are some top tips to ensure you blokes get a fairer share of the fairer sex in the noughties and beyond. If you're cohabitating or just visiting, it's the little things you do that score big points with the ladies. Simply by sitting down on the job, even the little ones, means you never have to run foul of the seat up, seat down conundrum and you'll be a local hero by being one of the only blokes around that doesn't leave a puddle or a pool. Just don't tell anyone you're whiz sitting down. Here's another tip to make the meeting of the sexes a little less of a battle. A lot of women get really dirty with guys drinking out of the carton and not using a glass. So here's a solution. When you get home from the shops, pour the contents of all the cartons straight into glasses and put them in the fridge. That way you still have the convenience of drinking straight out of the fridge, but you score points by using a glass. Don't you just love channel surfing? Doesn't it drive her wild? The thing to do when you feel like channel surfing is go and have a sit down whiz and get yourself a glass of drink from the fridge. When you've scored enough points with these manoeuvres, she'll let you do what you want with the remote. Well, there's a couple of top man tips from Todd. From one Aussie bloke to all the others. Good luck. Okay, we all know that the beach can yield a bounty of buried treasure. Like just now, I found a watch and a wallet buried in a shoe over there. But unfortunately, too many prospectors have tapped into this vein, leaving it overmined and leaving you with expensive equipment and a pocket full of bottle tops. But there is a cheaper and easier way to make money from your local beach. And all you need is a small kid in bare feet. You see, beach injuries can fetch huge compensation payouts from local councils. All right, Cooper, have a good time. And with a little bit of pre-planning, you don't have to leave your fortune in the hands of fate. This is a sharp spin I've hung up earlier. This way you can save energy and keep your eye on the kids at the same time. Hey, Cooper, come over here and play near Auntie Penny. You can't be too careful these days. Ow! Bingo, we have a strike. Oh, there, there, Cooper, you'll be all right. Now, with a little prick, a dull counsel and a sharp lawyer, you can look forward to a handsome payment. <laughs> See ya. Are you all right? What have you done? My foot hurts. Oh, no, where on your foot? That's no good. How'd you do that? Rent some stuff out from Bing Lee or something. And you've got a house insurance, contents insurance. Just say so you've got a little TV and a piddly little stereo or whatever. Yeah, you can take it out. Just stash it somewhere or whatever. Ring them up, get a police report, say your house got broken into, they took this and that. They give you a sheet to fill out on what got taken and you fill it out, but then you just put in better stuff sort of thing. Yeah, and you just get it back on insurance. Yeah. They steal it overnight and they burn it so the other person can go, can go and report it the next morning. Like a lot of teenagers do that. I know one person who stole... Oh, had his mum's car... And it was insured and they crashed it and they were underage, they had no licence, so they went and blew the car off. <laughs> so then they got the money and told their parents it was stolen. His car got stolen. Well, apparently got stolen, I don't know what, what the go was there. And um, when he went to go for the insurance, they found the key inside the car, so they just dismissed it. <laughs> you pay that much for insurance, don't you? You just want to... Uh... You know, like, get, get a little bit back out of the big companies occasionally, so... 
you know, it's, I don't think it's, it's frowned upon that much by the community. <laughs> I have a child in Africa. I expect you do too. I also sponsor a panda in the zoo, a bus for a group of disabled children, and many other favourite charities which I happily patronise. Those less fortunate than us crave a friendly, receptive and amorous link to our normal world. And simply by writing letters, you can communicate with the most extraordinary people from all walks of life, from all over the world. I just received this letter from my penal pen pal, Mad Dog. It took a little time before Mad Dog opened up to me, but now he writes all the time. And sometimes he even sends me craft gifts. I'm sure some of his colleagues are a little envious of his creative flair. And just so they don't take the mickey out of him too much for his macrame knitting, Mad Dog has asked that I hide these craft knives and steel knitting needles inside this book. Bless him. Mad Dog has many years of rehabilitation to go before he's ready to rejoin society. But with creative craft, his remaining time behind bars should be a delightful experience. Well, Dr Rudy, it seems that even after all these weeks, the letters and emails just keep pouring in. Yes, and I must say it certainly feels good to feel wanted. That's right. This week, I received a very special letter from Caridwen of Claremont in Perth. And a big hello to all of you in Perth. We know you love the show. Caridwen writes, Dear Life Support Team, Recently, my father Isla passed away and since then my mother hasn't got over the loss. So I spend most of my time keeping her company, but now I want my life back. Is there anything I can do to ease her loneliness? Well, Caridwen, my condolences. Sometimes the loss of a loved one can take an incredible toll on the lives of grieving family members. But don't despair. There is something you can do for your mother. Simply convince her of the reality of reincarnation and then give her a rabbit called Allah. All you have to do is call the rabbit dad a couple of times and it will fill the empty void in her life and leave you free to live your life. Wonderful, Dr Rudy. Such simple advice. Simple advice for simple Australians. And here's more of that advice right now. Ah, oh, g'day. Now, I know many of you suffer from hemorrhoids and you can have a really terrible time of it if you have a massively distended anus, especially if you've got an office job where you're sitting on your backside all day. And carrying around one of these isn't very discreet. So, tonight I'm going to show you a clandestine way to ease your working day. We all know that magnets can be very useful attracting metal objects, but you can also use them for their repulsive qualities. If you line up north against north with these two barbed magnets, they'll push away from each other. So, if you've got a bad attack of the grapes, all you've got to do is stick two of these bar magnets in the back pocket of your pants and then slip two of the same magnets facing the same way under the fabric of your office chair. Now, when you sit down, the magnets will repel each other and you'll just float above the chair on an invisible magnetic force. What a relief. So take a tip from Todd and no one will be the wiser whilst you help your hemorrhoids heal. Hello there, Dr. Rudy here. You probably don't know it, but investment portfolio diversification is a goal that all average Australians should aim for. Alongside your Telstra shares and your home mortgage, you might find that you could turn your hobby into an enjoyable earner. You know, a hobby is a great way to relieve stress in a hectic lifestyle or fill in time in a lethargic one. A hobby can satisfy creative urges introduce you to new friends with similar interests, and if you're a collector like me, it can be quite exciting. So what do I collect? Spoons. Yes, for me, nothing matches my feeling of exhilaration when I'm on the hunt for that certain spoon. I know for some people, celebrity paraphernalia is all the rage. A Jimi Hendrix guitar or the shirt off an athlete's back. But I tell you, it's spoon collecting for me. 
and here they are. Spoons collected from some of the world's most rich and famous. This one here is an early Brett Whiteley. Crude, but a good indication of where his inspiration was taking him. And this one over here is a Kurt Cobain. As it turned out, a limited edition and worth quite a bit of money. And this one here is now almost impossible to get. A rare one from Nick Cave. Every time I look at it, I remember how good his music used to be. So, if you want to get some relaxation into your lifestyle and some realty into your estate, it's a great investment habit to get into. Bye now. We all know how stressful it can be going out for the day and leaving your baby with your English nanny. The thought of coming home to a shaken, brain-dead or just plain-dead baby can really ruin an outing. But don't panic. There is a way to protect your baby and your peace of mind while still enjoying cheap, unprofessional childcare. Just make your baby one of these adorable sinker suits. Simply sew 25 kilos worth of sinkers to a jumpsuit. Then put it on your baby and sew it shut. <sighs> Unless your nanny's a bodybuilder, there's no way she'll be able to shake something this heavy. <sighs> Although, I should tell you that if you own a pool, it's probably not a good idea. But if you could afford a pool, you could probably afford proper care. So there you have it. A crafty childcare creation that will keep your baby's brain where it should be. I've lost way too many friends to mosh pits and I don't ever want to see it happen again, especially not to me. So, I've found a way that you can rock hard in the crowd and live to enjoy the ringing in your ears the next day. Just hire a CMO wrestling suit from one of your local sports stores because when nobody else will take responsibility, you've got to do it yourself. See ya! Oh, that was a totally top tip, Penny. It's well done for bringing some safety and common sense to those dangerous places. Well, it's like we always say, more advice for your lifestyle. Well, I can't even talk about it. But here we are at the end of another episode. Yes, the end of our eighth episode. As good a reason as any to barbecue a duck. Wow. It's a Chinese barbecue duck with mandarin pancakes and cucumber. A duck pancake? I'm up for some of that. That looks all right. So make sure you join us next week because we'll have more great advice for you. That's right. So we look forward to seeing you then. And remember, the only reason we're in here is because you're out there. Good night, Australia. Australia.